What is going on people? Today we're going to be talking about range blast and uh, the range heroes that you want along with some other miscellaneous things that I would like to point out uh, specifically about this type of march. Now let me go over to my battalion and take a look at it. Um, now oh, first of all I don't have an army size boost so the 375 is going to be messed up. Yeah, see it's going down 374. It'll go down to like 250. Watch, yeah. Okay, let me let me use a size boost first, cause if not, it's not gonna show what I uh, what I want to show. So I'll just use these 5,000 gems for you guys. Okay, for you guys. So let's go over. It. Now, um, first let's go over the heroes. Basically, if you've been watching my infantry and cav uh, blast videos. Which I'll have in the uh, in the uh, comment section, also in the description. It follows the same thing, right? So let's let's go over down to to the range. Um, there is quite a few heroes that you could possibly have, and all of this will depend on the heroes that you have available to you. But for instance, if I, if I back up here, this is the heroes that I'm using for my range. Now, is it the most optimal? Uh, no, because there's a couple of things that are missing. Number one. I don't have the 11k so obviously if you have those you want to use them they have the highest stats uh and then the other thing is that i do not have my uh my master cook maxed out and he is a very good range hero because he have range hp and attack um my the, the one that i'm using for him right now is ethereal guide which is fairly good but not just not as good as him uh she also has range and defense and army max hp but obviously, I'd rather have the range HP rather than army HP and range defense. But again, it's not like a huge drop off, but just something to keep in mind. Master Cook would definitely be in my lineup over Ethereal. But outside of that, this is my go-to. Um, and with range, there isn't as many good uh, army heroes as uh, like Cavalry has, for instance. But the biggest one is going to be Songstress of the Sea. She is usually very good uh, to have as just your main leader. She's used uh, a lot for forts, etc. So if you're going to invest a lot on a range hero, uh, I would probably suggest Songstress being number one. And then, of course, Grove Guardian being number two, just because Grove Guardian is going to be the best range hero for a blast. Like I said, uh, this is going to be equivalent to like um, the, the uh, Twilight Priestess um, or Steambot for Cavalry. So it gives you attack, defense, HP, very, very solid. Um, also, very, very good in other areas of the game, whether it's monster hunting. There is a couple of heroes out there that he does come into play, uh, and as well as Colosseum, also very good. So just a solid hero all around. And then, of course, Petite Devil, this little devil right here, attack, HP, a Colosseum monster, a monster hunting monster, and the game just decided to randomly, I don't know what, what the game just did there, okay? It says that Ethereal Guide is chosen, but it's not. I can't deploy any more heroes. Well, alright, well, I guess the game just glitched out here. Uh, very. Oh, it's a, it's a question mark. Oh, well, you guys get to see a bug right in the... In the game, okay, well, I wasn't really expecting to record that. I'm guessing it's because I'm capped and it maybe messes with the game or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was weird. That was definitely weird. Um, okay, but regardless of any of that, right, there are a couple of other range heroes that I want to touch on. Um, this is one of the main ones that I want to mention, and that's Bombing Goblin. If you're going to be warring, especially early on, Bombing Goblin is going to be, it's going to be one of the first heroes that you want to max, just because it gives you army attack. An army attack, especially if you're going to be a trap, is going to be crucial. Rose Knight, Bombing Goblin, the only uh, free-to-play army attack heroes that you can get, outside of like Watcher and Chaos Dragon, but that's kind of like a different category of free-to-play in my view. Um, you can get them both free to play, but much harder, obviously. Um, so, Bombing Goblin is going to be one of those that you definitely want to have just in case. And then, um, there is the case of Trickster. So many people, especially early on, use Trickster. And you guys have to realize that Trickster brings nothing to the table in a range blast outside of just his squad attack. Now, if you're still early in the game and you just don't have a lot of range heroes, a lot of gold heroes, etc., 
and you just don't have anything else, then go ahead and use Trickster. Not because he's going to give you any stats per se, but I'd rather have a Trickster, a gold Trickster using his squad attack over like a crappy green range hero, right? Like, let's say I have, I don't know, like Death Archer to green or something. I would rather use a gold Trickster over a green uh, Death Archer just because the squad attack is going to offset the damage. I know, I know, I've always hated Trickster as a leader, but I'm talking strictly if you're earlier in the game. Um, the other thing that I want to mention with range heroes, um, and, and especially if you are free to play, I would always include um, Rose Knight in... Where's Rose Knight? Uh, where is she? Because she is a cavalry hero, but remember, you're going to have four range heroes, so you should be fine. Um, but if you have Rose Knight as your main lead, for instance, don't fall into the habit of changing your leader depending on what march you're going to be sending. Like, if it's cavalry, you have Rose Knight as your leader. If it's range, then you, uh, you change to like a bombing goblin as your leader. Because that's going to be obvious to an opponent, especially an opponent that's uh, somewhat versed in the game if they see you switching heroes they're gonna know what's coming and you don't want that right so if you're gonna have rose knight as your main lead the the heroes that i would suggest is gonna be tracker um because she does bring army attack and defense and after that the fifth one it's kind of a toss-up right because death archer does give you range attack 30 percent um, but Black Crow gives you army defense and army HP both at 50%. So there has been some testing done to where in some scenarios the HP and defense actually come out ahead. But generally speaking, I would I would go with Death Archer because attack is just valued more than defense and HP. Uh, especially when you are the one trying to do the damage, not necessarily defend. So keep that in mind. And if for some reason you're not going to have Rose Knight in your march then you can probably get more out of Black Crow than Rose Knight just because the HP and defense, 50 and 50, probably is going to offset just 20% attack. But I mentioned that because if you keep your Rose Knight as your leader, it's going to be much harder to determine what you're going to be sending. So just as an FYI, there's also the, the point uh, that I wanted to make and the reason why I, po I, I uh, used the army size boost. When you're sending a range march, um, you can manipulate the quote-unquote fluff uh, to your advantage. And I know that I've been mentioning fluff in your, uh, the other videos without necessarily going too in-depth into it, but let's go ahead and touch on it, right? If you're going to be sending a range blast, there is a couple of things that you really need to be aware of. First of all, if you're sending a range blast, do not, I repeat, do not only send range. Do not only send range, because if your march only has ranged, what's going to happen is when you start your attack on the castle, the enemy troops are going to recognize that you only have ranged, and because they won't be able to hit your troops, they're going to march out of their wall, and they're going to march out in an infantry phalanx. So even if they're sitting in a cavalry phalanx, and you think you're going to get this great hit, if you only send range, they will rush out and essentially counter you in an infantry phalanx. So that's something to really keep in mind. It doesn't necessarily uh, work the same way on forts, for instance, but if you're hitting a castle, never, ever, ever send only range because essentially you're going to be countering yourself. This is where the fluff troops come in. So let's say that you're going to be sending your your range blast and you're going to keep your range all the way in the back for instance in an infantry phalanx what you want to do in order to take advantage of the fluff troops is that you want to send at least four troops of each so in this case it'll be four infantry troops and four cavalry troops and what that's going to do is that it's going to fill up these squads because if you send four infantry troops each squad is going to be taken up by essentially only one troop. But what that's going to do is it's going to force the enemy to attack them first. Even though they're only attacking four troops, they have to hit this first. Then they're going to have to attack this. And then they're going to have to attack this. So essentially, you're wasting three of their attacks full on on what? Eight troops? And that will allow your range to start doing damage either to their wall or to their army right you can further try to uh, make this a little bit easier for you with a cavalry wedge 
So, if you're gonna be sending your range all the way in the back and trying to exploit the, the fluff troops, and for the reason that I mentioned, number one, so you don't get countered if you only send range, and number two, to make sure that the first two or three volleys are only attacking a couple of troops and you don't lose morale. But, instead of going infantry phalanx where you're gonna take roughly about three hits, what you can do is, you can send it in an, a, a cavalry wedge, and what's going to happen is, is that instead of taking three volleys first, you can be taken up to four. Because the initial attack is going to hit the first two cavalry squads, then they're going to hit either the two uh, infantry or the next two cavalry, depending on the speed, right, whichever goes on, on front. And then they, they're going to have to essentially attack these two cavalries, these two infantry, these two cavalries, and then these two infantry. That's four attacks before your range even gets touched. So, if you're going to be sending your range all the way in the back, make sure that you're using Cavalry Wedge. It will always come out ahead, because even if it still works out to be 3, it's still going to be the same here. So, just as an FYI, um, the other thing that you really need to be aware of is, if you're going to be sending a range blast and you have your fluff, etc., um, you can send it in Infantry Wedge if you think that you're going to be countered. So, for instance, a, a range blast into an infantry phalanx. If you go with an infantry wedge, it's gonna do essentially what, what I mentioned in the in my cavalry video. You're only gonna have to go through half of that infantry before you start moving on to their cavalry, etc. So um, just because of the way that it's set up, if you send it like this, you're gonna have to go through all of that infantry and it's probably not gonna be great. So the only time I suggest you sending your range all the way in the back like this is when you know Either they're offline and they're not going to be switching formations on you, um, or when you know that you're going to be hitting only cavalry or only cavalry in range, etc. If they have infantry, make sure that you probably want to send it in a range wedge just because you want to make sure that you try to keep your say, oh, I mean, uh, infantry wedge, I should say. Uh, ju just because you never know, if they switch to an infantry, you want to make sure that you're covered. So, something to keep in mind. Um, the, the other thing that I want to mention with uh, with the range, and let me actually pull up a, a, a battle. Okay, so I'm going to use the same battle as before. Uh, so this is a range blast. One thing to note, especially when you're either defending or attacking with range, is that range don't usually walk up. And that can be manipulated. You, you have to think about that when you're sending in your march. Like, for instance, if you're going to be attacking with infantry wedge, the fluff troop still works because even though the, the range are going to be in the side, in the middle, by the time the, your enemy gets through that infantry, the cavalry is probably would have run up in front of you and they still have to get through that. So just keep in mind that range does not work like infantry and cavalry. Infantry and cavalry are always pretty much moving forward until they meet an opponent where range is always shooting from afar and sometimes they may not move. So always keep that in mind when you're sending range blast. Um, but yeah, with these videos, the infantry, cavalry, and range, I wanted to make sure that I cover some of the basics. And I, I also included a little bit more information in each video, a little bit something different in each one. That way you guys can uh, get some more information on that. Uh, if you want to see other things uh, covered, let me know and uh, I'll hopefully cover it. Maybe some things that you're not too familiar with or it might still be confusing to you. I'll try to cover it if I haven't already. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos. Appreciate you guys for watching and until later. Bye.